name is Cameron Shane. I'm the founder of Budokan, Budokan University, Budokan Academy. Uh, Budokan is a system of mixed movement arts. We combine yoga, calisthenics, and martial arts into a single system. I like to say that Budokan is the glue that brings all these movement modalities together. I was in Los Angeles at the beginning of what we would call now modern pop culture yoga and, and how it began. I met different individuals who were you know, incredibly important along that way. I met Charlie Sheen and with Charlie Sheen came a complete shift in my, in my reality because Charlie offered me the opportunity to uh, be his personal bodyguard, to, to live with him and travel with him. Um, through Charles, I met Chris Tucker, and Chris Tucker, who called me up one day and said, hey, I've got this opportunity to do this film with this guy named Jackie Chan, and it's you know, called Rush Hour. Chris hired me as his fight scene coordinator and as his trainer. I continued to do Rush Hour 2. Then I, I, then I got a little bit disheartened by the film industry. I didn't like it. I found I didn't like it very much. So I started working one-on-one -on -one with uh, Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox and Renee Russo and Meg Ryan and people at that time who were you know, A-list actors. I started becoming a personal trainer for them and, and someone was working with them one-on-one. -on -one. So it was an extraordinary experience for a guy who's like, I don't know, at the time, you know, 20-something 20, 20 years old. Um, I, was, uh, I was living the dream. Whether it's a couch, a seat, or a car, I bet you hours and hours. And then you come to a yoga class and you go, I'm going to fix all this in one hour. <laughs> so you're going to fix you're going to fix eight or ten hours of bad behavior with your body with one hour of stretching. I don't think so. It's not going to happen. So you got to change your reality. You've got to be on the floor more. You've got to stop sitting in chairs. You've got to actually completely shift how you think about the way you exist in your body. Or you can have a really tough time as your body gets older and you're going to suffer. So you can do whatever you want. That's your business. But right? I'm in the business of helping people who want to do something about that. Change that. For people who are wanting to learn how to use that tool, the tool of movement. Because, you know, why am I moving? What's the point? It feels good. Okay, got it. Absolutely. And that's, that's one of the benefits of movement is I physically feel better because of the chemical release. Uh, my body feels more relief. But when you peel away another layer, you go a little deeper, you start to realize that movement is a way of examining mind. And that then enriches the movement experience in a way that martial artists have been exploring for a long time. Yogis have been exploring for a long time, which is why both of these movement systems typically are accompanied by a mind system. There is this connection between mind and body in the sense of if I'm too much in my, my thinking, structured mind, 
I can't move because then I, I want to know the movement. But then this goes back to finding the movement and seeking for it. I see it very much as an internal process. Yeah. My biggest life lesson through Budokan or with Budokan is failing. Because I see that too often, people coming in and, and not be being willing to fail and, and suffer or sacrifice. I think this is definitely something that I can share because I've been through that. This is something that I feel like everybody should be, should be willing to explore. Learning to move in a way that is freeing up the body from rigid patterns and suggesting that there are, you know, 360 degrees of possibility rather than, you know, here to there, which is very martial arts. It's very linear in its, in its especially makes martial arts in its nature. Investigate the possibility that, that the body needs to have uh, complete range and complete possibility because it needs to investigate not only the function of movement but the aesthetic of movement as well. So in other words, why would modern dance as an example be something interesting for a mixed martial artist to study? Because it frees you up from these habitual patterns that you might use uh, purely to for function. So when you start to examine this as an idea, which is mobility, um, you start to see that this might actually create longevity for the fighter. It might create uh, more possibility for the fighter. Uh, and then this is how fighters are starting to find this kind of work and how fighters are starting to find me because they're interested in working with someone who's at my age, somebody who's you know almost 50 years old who still moves in the body like a 20 year old. And you cut my head off, I look I move like a kid, you know, and they're like, man, how's this guy moving like this and almost 50 years old? I want to understand that. You know, Cameron's just an awesome guy. He makes it so much fun to learn. Uh, he's inspiring, you know, he's super inspiring with the way he can move for his age. And you see, he's not slowing down one bit. Um, you know, for me, uh, when I'm, you know, getting close to 50, if I can do half of what he can do, you know, I'm going to be training every day and I'm going to be happy. So right now I'm working with, you know, fighters like Rafael Lovato Jr., uh, Shanji Hibero, uh, Josh Bergman. Josh is an example who's retiring from the game, from UFC, One, you know, been welterweight top 10 a couple different times, 40 professional fights. At the same time, Rafael uh, Lovato Jr., who is, uh, you know, arguably the best middleweight fighter in in the world, but in, certainly in the Bellator program. So he's coming to work with his mobility because, as this big, very powerful man, he's also uh, like a lot of athletes are. He's finding that uh, he recovers quicker, has more range, and more fluidity and more quality in the movement because our focus in this work is to slow movement down and examine places in the movement chain or pattern where there's something sticky, something not, not connecting, something uh, that is you know, out of order. And so that's not something that fighters do a lot is slow down stop, look, examine, and he's willing to do that kind of work. Shanji's willing to do that kind of work, so these guys are all here um, to use um, yoga and mobility work that we teach as a way to inform something they already do at the highest level in the world. I think that speaks to the kind of impact this work has when you've got a fighter who's on his way to the top and is still willing to say what can I do to continue to improve not just hey I'm great and I've got it figured out I'm a black belt and I'm winning I'm, I'm winning because he's winning which is ironic he's already successful 
but he'll stop and go, you know what, I, I, I want to still be better. you should definitely be doing yoga and mobility you know muay thai definitely yoga mobility if you're already in the yoga add the mobility if you're in yoga explore jujitsu you know there's always another piece to add to the puzzle um, and if you're just a regular person just get started My explanation, my gift to these guys is that you have to be willing to go into the body and explore it as a scientist, as an artist, and as a philosopher. It can't just be one. So oftentimes we understand movement as just the scientist. It's just get it done. This is the, this is the technical work. This is the practical application of it. But then we forget the artist is involved. So wh why do I have to move beautifully? What's the point of moving uh, more gracefully or uh, more uh, aesthetically pleasing? Well, because something is there. There's another layer there that gets um, added in when you start to actually want what you do to look a certain way as well. I see fighters going to like a certain age and not be able to move at all because you get beat up a lot. You know, fighting, you get beat up a lot. Uh, it's maybe different than art, martial art like Jiu Jitsu or, or wrestling maybe, you know, that you're always moving, but the, it's interesting how when you're not doing Jiu Jitsu, you look like a cripple. And I think it's important when you're not doing Jiu Jitsu, you still be able to function well. This is how I think Budokan is informing modern martial arts in this infancy, it's, it's still very early, but I think that it's going to become more and more and more the way martial artists train because they want to be sustainable and they want longevity rather than just to get in, be tough and strong for a while, break all their joints and bones and then retire in pain. The way I have seen Rafael growing from this, it's because he's just a better mover now. Um, you know, changing angles, and, and especially for MMA and fighting, is your ability to improvise, you know? We have like, for example, a, a formal way of techniques, right? But when you're in a bad situation, you can't go back to the book and look, look okay, he grabbed my wrist like this, my head like that, and that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, when we incorporate movement and fluidity uh, that we practice, allows you to have a creativity. You know, and sometimes it's like this, there's, there's no set form. If, 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 I believe that if you, if you set up a form, you're actually limiting yourself. I think the, the new generation of movement is going to impact because now it's not just about throwing a punch. It's not about throwing an arm walk. It's about 
the process. You know, it's about how do you get there. Jiu-Jitsu means a gentle way, right? For example, it's about minimal, minimal force, maximum efficiency. And when you have quality of movement, you less effort, you know? And I, and I believe Bruce Lee, you know, in the early days, he was already talking about the fluidity of movement. It, I think in the world today, I, I'm a believer that every human being should wake up and move, do something, walk, move, stretch, roll, train jiu-jitsu, do Muay Thai, do something. And uh, his, his idea of put it all together and, 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 and keep that gentle, um, I would say the gentle philosophy of the human being is it, so special and I, and I feel very blessed to, to be able to, to witness uh, the teacher training. It was just not just a normal class, it was people willing to pass that to other people and, uh, and using me and I was able to, to help people too with movement because for me, like I said, it's just normal for me. You teach me movement once and I'll know. Uh, for me, it was very special to be able to empower people uh, through his through his environment, and I think I, I feel like family. The atmosphere and the whole vibe is to me, and this is something that I always try to establish, and I would say nurture from from the female side is very much like a big family. I mean, this is this is how I grew up. This is my Brazilian way, like we're always everybody together, and uh, same for Cameron. So, for us, Budokan becomes our extended family. I'm really noticing that all the girls, maybe there's some fear at the beginning, but since we create such a safe learning environment, they, they get hooked usually. I mean, they, they can see how everything is linked and then everything just makes more sense. They're like, oh, this movement here, and then I can apply it there and it has a function for this. So I think people, kind of enjoy seeing this whole puzzle unfold at the end and then it's like okay I get it so um, and I think girls there's just a different mindset now I think we we like to be a little bit more badass and we like to get stronger and this whole uh, skinny uh, idolization is, is moving away and the strength and and the grace that comes with the strength and um, the power is just taking taking over and martial arts is to me personally an amazing tool in order to to create that uh, in the body and in the mind just just the way I see our girls from our little girls to the women even change in their like, posture and, and the, the, the self-confidence, because knowing that you can defend yourself, I think plays a big, big role for us too, yes. By combining these unique and specific movement styles, you create a very specific kind of mover. And that's really what our, our goal is primarily, is to build this mixed movement athlete. My ideal student is really difficult to spot on the street. You don't know. You know, if you walk in there, you might look around and you go, wow, I don't know if, did any of these people have anything in common here other than Budokan. You know, I've got an accountant over here and I've got a computer programmer over there and I've got a, you know, I mean, they just don't, they don't have anything in common outside of that, the fact that they really have a passion for learning and a passion for moving. And that's it. I, I, there's just no markers that you could find. You're, you're on the street and you're like, 
you would love Budokan. You know what I mean? Because I can get, I can see somebody that's so physically fit, and they come in there and they just, they don't get it. You know, they're, they're just, they don't want to, they don't feel, they don't feel inspired by the, the humbling process of not being good. The structure of the school, and I did, and I, I formed it this way, I'm not trying to exert you. These are two hours of education with movement. So oh, that's a school. And I think that's the difference between a school and a gym is that my commitment to the students is education and its commitment to people is to give them an environment to sweat and, and get fit with them. Fitness is not my focus, nor is it Budokan's focus in any way, shape, or form. It just happens to be a byproduct of what occurs when you do Budokan. So I'm, I'm speaking to the point of how you build the complete movement athlete through movement, you know, physiological movement and psychological movement. I've got I've to do two things here. I've got to educate physically and mentally and emotionally. Because yes, you can be very intelligent. I also need you to be emotionally intelligent. I need you to be able to handle situations, be mature, be a leader. I need you to be able to physically understand how to make right, the right decisions. That educational process is not something you do in 20 minutes. It, it, the, the best athletes, the best movers, the best, um, the best competitors, they, they have to be willing to go through the process of being uh, not the best every day, maybe even till the day they die because they're, because they're always either testing themselves or looking for someone who can reveal where they're weak and, and show you know, where there's work to do. So it's very few people that ever reach a point where they're bored. They're like, I'm so good, I'm bored. And I think that anybody who's ever been great at something was terrible at it in the beginning.